And in a way, this is showing us that JavaScript is dying right in front of our eyes. What is the state of JavaScript? Is JavaScript dying? Is it thriving? What exactly is happening? These are questions that are answered every single year using the state of JavaScript survey, and we just got the results. So in this video, I want to go over these results, discuss a bit about what's happening with JavaScript and the industry as a whole, and my perspective on what I think is going to happen in the future. So first up, we have just some demographics about who took the survey. So age, pretty much everybody was in this range of 19 to 44 with just a few slightly older than that and a few slightly younger. It will be interesting to see over time with JavaScript maturing if this starts to even out a little bit, but for now, this is sort of what we have. Then we also have years of experience. We can see almost everybody's in this range of one to 20 years of experience, which I guess is a pretty broad range. So this is a little bit flatter than the actual age distribution because we do have a good number of more senior people taking the survey, which is good to see. And then we have higher education degrees with about half of these survey respondents not having a related college degree, which is super cool to see because it just shows that there's a lot of growth in things like self-teaching and boot camps, which allow alternative paths that don't cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and take years of your time to become a software developer. So that's awesome to see. And then we have yearly salary, which at first glance, we see that the salaries might not be as high as we're used to seeing in the United States, which is something I want to point out here. So we have most people in this range of 50 to $100,000 with some in the higher range and some lower. But if we sort by country, we can see in the US, it's almost all $100,000 and up. There's only about 25% that are below that marker. But then with almost every other country, it's very, very different. So many countries, have much, much lower salaries for software engineers than we do in the United States. If you are interested in why this happens, I do have an entire video explaining why I think it is that software engineers in the US make so much more money. So do watch that video, but watch it after you finish this video. Okay, so next we have libraries. And I know this graph you're looking at is very complicated, but let me try to break it down. It took me a moment to understand it as well. So. On the x-axis, we have negative opinion to positive opinion. So the farther to the right something is, the more positively people think about it. And then from the bottom to the top is going to be if you have used it. So at the bottom of the y-axis are things that most people haven't actually used. And at the top of the y-axis are things people have used. So up here at the top right, we have things that people have used and they like. So with Webpack, we can see from 2021, there's actually been a decrease in how many people have used it. And just over time, it seems like the sentiment around Webpack has been getting more negative. If we look at React here, it has an interesting trajectory where the number of people who have used it has skyrocketed over the last five years or so. But the sentiment seems to be going down a bit, although between 2022 and 2021, not a whole lot changed. Next.js is an interesting one to point out because we can see it went from in 2018, almost nobody having used it, to lots of people are using it now, and the opinions tend to be very positive. People tend to like Next.js a lot, which means it's probably something to be looking out for more. If you're looking for something new to learn, Next.js could be a great tool to be learning. Another interesting one is Angular. So we can see in 2016, not a ton of people had used it, but it had a pretty positive sentiment. But by now in 2022, the sentiment is getting much worse, and the amount of people who have used it has actually gone up. Although the number of people who have used it in 2022 versus 2021 has actually gone down. So in 2021, there were more people using Angular than 2022. Now in very YouTuber fashion, the state of JS actually made a tier list for us. So this chart ranks libraries based on their retention ratio, which is the percentage of users who would use the library again. So here in the S tier, we have Vite, Vite Test, ES Build, Playwright, I think this is testing library, TSC CLI, I think that's just the TypeScript CLI, Next.js and Svelte. So these are things that people would really want to use again, which sort of makes sense. These are things that we know of as people liking a lot. Vite is absolutely incredible if you haven't used it before. Svelte is also one of my favorite frameworks that doesn't get used a ton quite yet, but I think it's going to make a big splash in the future. So moving down to the A tier, we have Jest, Cypress, Storybook, React, Inex, NPM Workstation and Nuxt. So Jest and Cypress are both great testing frameworks I like a lot. React is interesting to see in the A tier 
as opposed to the S tier because I think it is probably the most popular framework. But I guess it makes sense that when something is more mature and has a lot of popularity, that it's also going to start to annoy some people who have been using it for a long time as they start to wish it had features that some of these newer frameworks have. So it makes sense that that's not in S tier. Going down to the B and C tiers, I'm not going to go through all of these, but some interesting ones to point out. So one, Vue is only in the B tier, and personally, I think Vue is amazing. I think more people should try out Vue. I wish Vue was more popular, but I guess a lot of people using it don't have the same opinions. We also have Electron down here, which if you don't know, Electron basically allows you to build a desktop application using JavaScript and HTML and CSS. Personally, I think it's pretty cool, but it does have some performance issues, so maybe that's why people don't like it quite as much. React Native also is down in the B tier, whereas React is in the A tier, which to me sort of makes sense. I don't think React Native ever caught on quite as much as people may have thought it would in the beginning when it first came out. And then down in the C tier, we have a few different ones that I think used to be very popular and have just lost most of their popularity. So for example, Angular used to be the framework to be using, and now it seems like most people using it would rather not use it anymore. Gatsby also used to be incredibly popular, and it seems like that's sort of fallen off a little bit as well. And I honestly would expect it sort of to continue to trend in that direction. I think most people making a decision on what stack to use for a new project are much more likely to either just choose React or to choose one of the newer frameworks like Svelte. So now we have this interesting chart breaking down retention ratio and user count. So further to the right, so quadrants two and four are the quadrants of things being used a lot. And then over here on the left, we have things with lower user count. So maybe things that haven't caught on yet. And then we have retention ratio going vertically. So at the top right would be something with tons of users and great retention, meaning people like it a lot. The bottom left would be things with low users and the users that do exist don't like it at all. So these things in the top right are most likely the things to continue to keep growing because they already have a big user base, meaning they have a strong community and they have good retention. So this is going to be just the testing library, React, as well as Webpack. So I think this kind of makes sense. A lot of people use just React and Webpack sort of all together as part of their main stack. So it sort of makes sense here. There's actually nothing in Quadrant 4, so there's nothing with tons of users and low retention, which to me also means that things with low retention, so down in Quadrant 3, will probably never make it up to Quadrant 4, and it doesn't really make sense that anything could go up all that much in retention. I think it's pretty rare for something to get more popular unless they have an amazing update. So I wouldn't even really look too much to things in Quadrant 3, but then some of these items in Quadrant one could potentially be things to look out for, particularly ones near the top and towards the right. So for example, V tier has amazing retention, meaning people absolutely love it. And it's starting to get way more users, meaning it's getting more popular. And again, I will leave this down in the description if you want to play with this chart, because I, of course, can't go through every single one of these in this video. So here we can see the progression of frameworks over time. So first of all, we have retention, meaning which ones are the frameworks essentially that people want to keep using. And Solid is actually at the top with 91%, followed by Svelte, followed by Quick, which honestly I've never used. And then we have React, which interestingly enough has been decreasing a lot since 2019. Then we have Vue, which also has sort of followed a similar pattern to React. But then we can also switch to Interest. So these are the things people want to be using, which in a way could be a way to predict what's going to become more popular with Svelte up here at the top, which could mean that Svelte is going to get much more popular over time. And personally, I sort of believe this. I think Svelte is just an amazing, amazing framework. We also have usage to see what's being used a lot. And we can see React has absolutely been king. It's been used the most over time and it's staying at the top. I think it will stay at the top for a long time. Angular has been in the number two spot, but we actually can see since 2019, it has declined a decent bit, not a ton, but about 9% versus React has been pretty steady and actually increasing a little bit over that time. Vue has also stayed in the third spot for a while, keeping its usage about the same, roughly at about half of survey respondents. And Svelte has been increasing a little bit, but actually not that much. I do still think Svelte will increase in the future, but it's interesting to see that over the last two, three years, it hasn't actually had that big of an increase. And then we can go to awareness, which is basically just, do you know this exists? And we can see everybody seems to know React and Angular exist. Vue is also 
has high awareness. And then as we go down, some of these have less and less awareness. So Svelte is at 94%, Ember is actually down. So it's gone down from where it was before, down to 77%. So interestingly enough, we hear people talk all the time about how horrible front-end frameworks are, but when we actually do a survey, we can see only about 2% of people are very unhappy with the state of front-end frameworks. About 3% are just unhappy in general, which is about five total percent of people find themselves unhappy with front-end frameworks. Personally, I thought it would be a much higher number. Then we have 17% are neutral, 45% are happy, and 15% are very happy. So it's cool to see that people are happy with the tools that we have. And I also think we're going to keep developing better and better tools to hopefully even convert this 5% of people down here at the bottom. So next I want to look at some other technology. So here we have libraries that people regularly use with Lodash coming out on top by a huge margin. I'm actually pretty surprised to see this as well as RxJS is seemingly getting very popular. And honestly, I didn't think that many people were actually using RxJS, but that's cool to see. Let me know if you ever want to see videos on RxJS. It's one of those things that in the beginning can be a little bit hard to grasp, but it's actually an amazing, amazing library. Then we have jQuery, which I think if this was done five, 10 years ago, jQuery would have been all the way at the top by far. And now it's down in third place. And I think jQuery is just continually getting less important as most of what's in jQuery is just part of JavaScript now or part of some of these other libraries. So we don't really need jQuery too much anymore. Another interesting one in libraries for me is data visualization. So I was always under the impression that D3 was by far the most popular data viz library, but it seems like chart.js is actually being used by more people than D3, which to me was surprising. I don't know if that's surprising to you or not, but I just found that one interesting because for me, when I think of data viz, I think of D3, but I guess it's just not the only player and not even the biggest player. So here we have the balance between JavaScript and TypeScript. And in a way, this is showing us that JavaScript is dying right in front of our eyes. So JavaScript, has about 8% of people 100% using JavaScript, and then another 10% of people using it sometimes, maybe 5% that are 50-50, and way more people are using 100% TypeScript or almost 100% TypeScript, which makes sense at a professional level, TypeScript just works so much better because of the strict typing. And I think this is going to continue and over the next five to 10 years, we will see JavaScript almost entirely die out in favor of TypeScript. Luckily though, if you don't know TypeScript already and you know JavaScript, you can learn TypeScript in a day or two. It's not very complicated and it's basically the same thing because it's a superset of JavaScript. So if you are worried about that, don't be, just go learn TypeScript. It won't take you very much time. Another thing that's interesting to see about JavaScript is what people use JavaScript for. We see a lot of people talk about JavaScript as the front end web development language, but this isn't necessarily the case. We can see that's the main usage but there are a ton of people using it for backend development, for mobile apps, for desktop apps, data visualization, and all of these different things. So we can see JavaScript is still incredibly popular across the industry, not just for front-end web development. One of the questions I get asked the most is, do self-taught developers actually exist? Can you actually teach yourself how to code online? And can you even do it for free? And the answer to that question is actually yes. So if we look at the first learning method, so how did people initially learn to code? The majority were self-directed using Google, Stack Overflow, things like that. And then a bunch of people using online courses that were actually free courses. So probably videos on YouTube, things like that. And then we have some other options. So videos, books, on-job training, and then down here is school and higher education. So it's nowhere near the top of how people initially learned to code. I would imagine that a lot of these people learned how to code online a little bit and then went from there to school and learned in school but still the point remains that you can learn how to code online, which is awesome to see. It's also interesting to see how far down the list coding bootcamps are. It's one of those options we talk about a lot, but I guess in reality, the vast majority of people at least are getting their start using free resources online rather than committing to a coding bootcamp or even a university degree. I also just wanted to say, I think it's super cool to see that they shouted out a bunch of the top content creators who are making content around JavaScript. So this is cool to see if you're looking for places to get amazing content about front end development, JavaScript, whatever it might be, go down to this list and you can see the YouTube channels, Twitters, et cetera, for all these people and go follow some of them. A lot of them have amazing, amazing content. So to end off, it seems like people for the most part are pretty happy with the state of JavaScript. And a lot of people seem to think it's moving in the right direction, which is cool to see, as well as we're seeing things like TypeScript getting far more popular, which of course is amazing. So with that said, that is going to be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe for future content and I will see you next time.